Yes. Thank you for the verbal because I can't see you guys right now. <laughs> Thank you. All right. So to get started, my name is Nikki Cavus. Uh, I'm the CEO of South Florida Tech Hub. Uh, South Florida Tech Hub, we are a nonprofit technology organization. Uh, we are association and membership driven. So I'm going to real briefly um, go through a little bit about the organization, how you guys can get engaged uh, for anybody that may not be familiar. And then, of course, we will give it to the woman of the hour, Nicole, to go through our LinkedIn training this morning. And hopefully you guys can see that my slide switching mm -hmm. it as well. Uh, so my, again, my name is Nikki Caboose. Uh, we have a, a small team, which I think I have a slide in here. We have a small team, but mighty team. We do a lot with very small teams. So uh, I also invite any of you uh, as you learn about the organization um, and I go, kind of go through how to get engaged is please reach out to us. We have more than enough opportunities to volunteer at different events, get involved in our ambassadors group um, and really kind of uh, help us lead the drive here in making uh, South Florida a true tech hub and something that is visibly um, recognized as a tech hub internationally. So our kind of tagline, building South Florida's tech hub. So what does that mean? Um, so we've got uh, about about 265, 275 corporate members and partners right now. Um, and what we're trying to do is we work with higher education, we work with the school districts, we work with other nonprofits like your junior achievements and big boys, big um, uh, big brothers, big sisters. Um, we work with investors, startups, larger enterprise companies, like uh, some of our members, which <clears throat> I think I have a slide in here that as well, is we have small startups that are maybe, I have an idea and it's just me as a single founder and I need help getting this off the ground, all the way to some members like Office Depot, City Furniture, FPL, so the big guys that are more recognizable. And really, we're trying to connect the entire ecosystem. So to us, it doesn't matter if you're small, big, a single person, part of a larger company or team. We really just want to connect everybody that is in tech and innovation. That's kind of our one niche and the one thing that ties everybody together. Uh, these are some of uh, the members. I'm sure you probably recognize some of these company logos. <clears throat> Again, it could be big or small. We just want to make sure that um, everybody in the ecosystem that's connected to tech and innovation, and we can help tie them together. So uh, a little bit about um, our core initiatives, and these are our, kind of our four core pillars of things that we focus on. So almost everything that we do is going to fall under one of these. So um, I won't go through them in, in, in too much depth, but if anybody's interested, please reach out to us. I'm happy to have a one on one or Jeffrey as well. Um, but uh, our first is talent. So anything that is talent and workforce development. So we have a lot of programs, a lot of initiatives from we have kids coding classes where uh, pretty Interesting. We have them as young as like four and five that come in and literally can't spell yet, don't know what a space bar is to try to teach them, you know, uh, computer basic computer skills. And then of course, as they get uh, older into coding. Um, and then we've been working on some programs uh, with back end with robotics, uh, also collaborating with other organizations that are also in the tech space to support their initiatives, like uh, the first robotics competition. I don't know if anybody's familiar with that, but if you're not, it's pretty amazing. It's with a bunch of middle schoolers, high schoolers that actually build robots and it's a huge competition to organizations like Code Art in Miami mm -hmm. that are teaching young girls how to code and getting them in through uh, an interest in art. Um, Ashton, which again, she couldn't be available on this call, but Ashton is our director of talent uh, engagement. So she works directly on any kind of programs, initiatives uh, in talent and workforce development, and then organizations like Career Source and those that um, that's their kind of main function as well. Uh, branding. So branding isn't necessarily the tech hub brand, it's how are we branding South Florida as a tech hub? So how are people from across the state, from across the country, and even across the world viewing South Florida? Because, um, you know, a lot of people for many, many years, even decades, when they think about South Florida, they're thinking of, you know, the beaches and the palm trees and the sun and thinking about this as a great place, which is very timely for spring break, which is all wonderful, but we're more than just Disney World and spring break. Um, we want people to actually know we have a really strong business ecosystem here and that there's a lot of innovation, a lot of tech and opportunities to move your family for work opportunities, open up headquarters um, as we are, of course, the gateway to Latin America and then, of course, the rest of the world as well. Um, the third one is community. So the community is really, it's, it's you all. So community is us supporting the local meetup groups, the user groups, any, any individual people or organizations that are trying to tie the ecosystem together and making sure that we can be a good resource and a good support for those organizations and individual people as well. Uh, entrepreneurship. 
So we, again, we support a lot of um, organizations like accelerator programs, incubator programs, uh, individual founders or entrepreneurs, making sure that they have the resources and connections they need to grow their businesses. Um, you know, it, it's a very well-known thing that you basically need a very strong entrepreneurial ecosystem and a lot of new innovation to support a strong overall ecosystem in any kind of area. So that's something that we um, we do a lot of work in that that area as well. And I think Jeffrey, just so you know, at least on my end, it shows that there's somebody in the waiting room as well. Um, <clears throat> so this is our small but mighty team. So the top row is our full time. And then the bottom row is our interns. Um, so you have myself as CEO, Ashton, of Director of Talent Engagement. Jeffrey, who's on the call today with us, is Director of Membership Engagement. Uh, Penny is our Director of Strategic Initiatives. So she works on anything that is more technical and then our larger signature events. And then Nadia, which I'm sure some of you know, because she's more out in the community doing a lot of our smaller community events, uh, is our programs and event specialist as well. And this here is if anybody's interested in uh, being added to our newsletter, if you scan this, it'll go right directly where you literally just put an email address. That's all the information we need. We'll add you to our weekly net newsletter. And the newsletter just keeps you kind of in the loop with news going on in the tech ecosystem in South Florida. There are startup opportunities, job listings. Uh, we have upcoming events. So it's a little bit of everything just to kind of keep you in the loop with what's going on in South Florida. Uh, oh, I'm glad I put this in here because I would have forgotten. Um, so our next big event coming up is SoFlow DevCon. Uh, SoFlow DevCon is basically our big developers conference. So we have, you know, UI, UX designers, software developers, project managers, a lot of your technical people that really want to get your hands dirty, get into the nitty gritty. Um, there's going to be a mix this year for anybody that's attended in past years. Usually it's been hour long workshops, but now we're actually mixing that up with some uh, 15 minute kind of TEDx style lightning talks, some 30 minute talks, and then also the longer uh, hour hands on workshops. So you can get a mix mix this year. Um, and I'll make sure to drop all this stuff, um, unless somebody's already doing it, I'll make sure to drop all this stuff in the chat so you guys have the links to register um, and or if somebody wants to sponsor or apply to speak as well, because we are still looking for some speakers. And so uh, to the woman of the hour, Nicole uh, Hylinski, she's a paid media manager at Digital Resource, which is one of our wonderful members as well. And um, this is going to be a, a part of a three part series, which I'll let Nicole talk about. But her topic today uh, is LinkedIn 101, Mastering Your Profile. So I'm going to stop sharing my screen. I'll let you take over, Nicole, and introduce yourself and then feel free to take it from there. Yeah, of course. Thank Nicole, you. Nicole, Nikki, I don't mean to interrupt. I don't see anyone mm -hmm. in the waiting room, Nikki. If you see them, can you let them in? Cool. Of course. Thank you. Thank you. And I just started sharing my screen. Just if you guys can confirm, you can see it. Yes. Cool. All right. Sounds good. So I will go ahead and get started. So hello, everyone. My name is Nicole Hylinski, and I am the paid media manager over at Digital Resource, um, which if you don't know, is a digital marketing agency that's located in downtown West Palm Beach, Florida. Um, I am so honored today to be talking with all of you guys about the topic of, which is actually the first part, of, like Nikki mentioned, the first part of Tech Hub's Lunch and Learn LinkedIn 101 series. And today we are going to be talking about mastering your LinkedIn profile. So if everyone's ready, we can go ahead and get started. So just talking through um, a couple of the items that I'm going to be talking about in today's presentation. So why I think 2024 is the year of LinkedIn, how we're, uh, how we're going to craft that winning profile, the art of networking online. And lastly, we'll talk through some tips on building up a personal brand. And then once we're wrapped up with that, we'll go ahead and open up the floor for any questions you guys might have. Um, I'd say definitely still feel free to add any questions if I'm on a certain topic. You can definitely write them in the chat if you'd like. Um, I know Nikki's going to be moderating that, and we can definitely go ahead and address those at the end of the presentation. But I will go ahead and get started. And I'm going to start off um, with an opening statement that 2024 is the year of LinkedIn. And we can kind of talk through um, why I said that kind of bold statement. And we can talk through some of the data. But 
behind that statement is that in 2023, LinkedIn ended up hitting a whopping 985 million members. So this platform has been seeing continuous growth year over year. Last quarter, um, there was a 12% increase in their engagement, making LinkedIn the place to be, making your presence on the platform even more important, which is why I'm so excited to talk to all of you guys about this today. So LinkedIn over the last year has made a ton of new updates to their platform, making it even more effective than it already was. Some features I thought were worth noting are their AI-powered coaching. So LinkedIn recently rolled out an AI-powered coaching feature that includes a chat bot that offers LinkedIn users real-time advice, which I thought was really neat. Um, this chat bot essentially references LinkedIn's entire learning library to provide answers and links to relevant courses that they offer and any additional information about the topic that you write into the chat bot about. So for example, you can ask, how can I approach a difficult conversation? And the chat bot will actually respond with advice and recommendations, like I mentioned, pulled from their library. Um, similar to some of the other chat bots out there, you're able to provide it feedback to the bot specifically on whether or not the response that was given to you was helpful. And then you can also ask for it to clarify a little bit further um, and also an aspect that I really like about this new feature the most is that if two people write in about the same question, um, they will essentially get two different answers. And you're probably like, why, why would we get two different answers? That can be a little bit confusing. Um, but the reason why I think it's so cool is because the LinkedIn chatbot actually is going to be taking your job title into consideration when providing a response to determine what kind of advice you might need. Um, so it's going to be looking at, isn't it? Is an individual contributor asking this question or is it a manager that's asking this question? And then it will essentially tailor um, its response based on that. So I thought this AI powered coaching um, tool, this AI chatbot was really worth noting uh, when it comes to some of the new features that LinkedIn has started to introduce. Another feature LinkedIn rolled out in 2023 was name pronunciation tools, which is exactly how it sounds. This feature is going to essentially allow you to record your name pronunciation and display it on your LinkedIn profile for other users to, list, or to listen to. Um, next, we have profile goals. So depending on what you're looking to use LinkedIn for at that time, um, you're actually able to customize your goals, which I thought was pretty neat. Um, so for example, are you looking to fill a position at your company or are you looking um, for a job? Are you on the job hunt looking for something new? And it's actually as simple as a click of a button and it will automatically be included in your profile. And I know that this is something that you're also able to customize your profile picture with. So it will include a little bit of a banner saying hiring or, um, or looking for opportunities to make it a little bit more obvious in the day to day as people are scrolling throughout the LinkedIn newsfeed. The next one is going to be a collaborative article. So these articles are going to be new ways for users on the platform to learn more about a specific topic from the LinkedIn community um, specifically. And then you can actually contribute yourself if you consider yourself an expert um, on a specific topic. So topics can range anywhere from how do I get a promotion to more specifically, how do I advertise to Gen Zers? Um, these articles are published by LinkedIn and include insights that have been added by the LinkedIn community directly. So all you have to do is set yourself uh, to creator mode and then you can go ahead and contribute away. And then the last feature that I did wanna mention on this slide is going to be um, audio only events. So as we know, um, podcasts have gotten more and more popular over the years. So um, now on LinkedIn, you can actually host audio based webinars, which is awesome. And these events are a great way to connect with your followers, build relationships, and you can even get uh, career opportunities for it. Now that we've gone through some of LinkedIn's new features, let's talk through how to get how to put together a winning profile. But before we get into the profile setup, let's first talk through why it's important to have a great LinkedIn profile in the first place. So your profile is essentially going to help you make a lasting impression. 
Your profile majority of the time is going to be someone's first impression of you. Um, and you'll want to make sure that you put your best foot forward. So your profile is going to showcase your experience, your skills, and your achievements to help you stand out in a crowd. Next, setting up a, an awesome profile is going to help you attract new opportunities. And we're not talking just jobs here. So setting up your profile the right way can help you get invited to collaborate on articles, like I mentioned a couple slides back, get invited to speaking engagements and more. Um, essentially, the, pro the possibilities are endless if you set up your profile, right? And then lastly, as we all know, um, a great LinkedIn profile is also going to help you network and simplify networking a little bit more. And this is going to help you open up conversations with industry leaders and future mentors, essentially what LinkedIn was made for. Now let's kind of talk about the um, anatomy of a LinkedIn profile. So there's going to be three major components that come into play when we're talking about a LinkedIn profile. So here's an example of, of my LinkedIn profile. So first we have personal information and this is going to include your name, your position, what topics you typically engage, um, engage with and where you're located can all be found towards the top of your profile. So here I have my name listed. I have um, my headline, which contains my position, which we'll talk about in a couple of slides um, forward. Like I mentioned, what topics I typically engage with just being a paid media manager. You know, I'm definitely in the topics of discussions when it comes to meta, Facebook, Facebook ads, Facebook marketing, um, plenty more different conversations as well, but that's going to be the personal information section of your profile. And then we have, next we have work experience. So I would highly, highly recommend including all companies you've worked with um, for it to highlight your experience and even listing out into detail all the job roles you've held within a certain company. And this is essentially just going to help you showcase your growth. Um, so for example, here we have, um, my experience where I've been with Digital Resource for over four years. I started out as a Facebook advertising strategist, and then my growth has shown over the last couple of years. And then on the right, we have achievements. So towards the bottom of your profile is where you're going to be finding your achievements, um, such as where you went to school, what certifications you've received in your career, and also it's going to be a place to highlight your skills more importantly. Um, and you can even have colleagues endorse the skills you listed to help you stand out a little bit more. And we're gonna break this down even more, but just wanted to give you guys kind of an overview on the anatomy of a LinkedIn profile. Um, um, where where to find what what's all included in a LinkedIn profile, et cetera. And then these next two slides that we're going to be talking through is essentially going to be the do's and don'ts of a LinkedIn profile. And we're going to start with the do's first. So do make sure when you're creating your LinkedIn profile that you're including a professional headshot. I'd say um, make it a priority to make sure you are using a high quality photo. And also um, it's really great that nowadays if you need any assistance, you can also reach out to an AI um, or use AI, reach out to an AI. You can uh, use an AI to help you generate uh, a high quality headshot that you can add to your LinkedIn profile. And then next, you can add a summary to highlight your skills, your experience, what you're looking to use LinkedIn for. Then we have listing out your achievements, which I just uh, touched on on the last slide. So listing out your achievements, you worked super hard on them. So make sure that you are adding them to your LinkedIn profile, because as we know, LinkedIn is going to be the place to showcase essentially success in your career. Um, so be sure to add those awards that you have received, those certificates and even more. Another tip is going to be customizing your URL. Um, so a personalized URL can make it can make your profile a little bit easier to share. Um, also remember it when you're away from your computer in case um, you're in person with somebody, you meet somebody on the on the street, you have a conversation with them and you want to connect with them right away. That has helped me a couple of times. I have a very um, straightforward URL. It's easy for me to remember for when I'm having those conversations. I can easily regurgitate it so then I can connect with that person. 
Another um, aspect is going to be asking for recommendations. And this is one thing I feel super passionate about. I personally love the recommendations section of LinkedIn um, or of the LinkedIn profile. Um, it is a very easy way to help you boost your credibility. And this is something that you can actually request for someone to complete on the platform or you can or a connection can just fill it out on their own if they wish. But there's two options there. The last couple of ones, so we have set yourself to creator mode. Um, this will essentially help you unlock uh, features like contributing to those articles that we spoke about a couple of slides back and more. And then lastly, get verified. So it's free. It's very similar to recommendations in a way where it will help boost your credibility. And this verification um, is just going to be proving your identity and where you work and just help, again, boost that credibility a little bit more. Then uh, now let's talk through some of the don'ts, um, the don'ts of your LinkedIn profile. So don't leave gaps. Um, and if you do, it's only going to be natural for people to think that if you don't set up or complete your profile fully, fully that there might be a, a lack of attention to detail, which is what, which is what we want to avoid, um, especially if you are on LinkedIn and your main goal is for job hunting. That's one thing um, I would recommend not leaving gaps. Um, more so in information. Try avoid um, being too self-promotional. So it's important to make sure that you keep the content that you're putting out very well-rounded and also relevant. Avoid sending generic connection requests. So I would recommend always when you're sending connection requests to send a personal message if possible to go alongside with that connection request. The next one's going to be Proofread, proofread, proofread. Uh, double, triple check that um, on your profile that your profile is error free. Um, very similar concept to what I was talking about with the gaps in your profile or the lack of information in your profile like we just spoke about. Um, it could lead people to think that there's some sort of a lack of professionalism there. So definitely make sure to double, triple check that your profile is error free. And then when posting, I would say try to avoid thinking it as a checkbox. So don't ever just post and log back on to or and never log back on to LinkedIn again. Um, you'll want to make sure that when you post, you're engaging with the users who are commenting on your posts and even go throughout the rest of the LinkedIn platform and try engaging with other people's posts as well. Make sure you don't copy other people. Instead, um, focus on reposting. So LinkedIn makes it super easy to repost. It gives you the option to just simply repost as it is. Or what you can do is repost and add some thoughts, which is super helpful. And again, makes it super easy for you to, if you agree with somebody, definitely feel free to repost it. If you agree with somebody and want to add your own original thoughts, definitely still feel free to do so. Um, you have two options there. And then lastly, and probably the most obvious here, um, don't spam. It's important to make sure that you are respectful and make sure that you're providing people value um, to those who you're connecting with. So like I mentioned a couple of the slides ago, we reviewed the anatomy of a LinkedIn profile. So now we're gonna go through um, a couple, it's all individualized, but this one specifically, we're going to be talking through how to create a compelling headline. And I'll typically provide some examples as well following. Um, so the first one being writing more than just your job title when you're focusing on um, writing a headline or coming up with a headline for your profile. So rather than just listing your job title, for example, software engineer, or in my case, um, paid media manager, considering adding some sort of a pizzazz there and adding it into the mix, think about what can essentially make you stand out in a crowd and what kind of perspective you can bring to the table. The main goal here is to give people a reason to click on your profile. Um, this is going to be visible on the, on the LinkedIn newsfeed. So Something eye-catching, again, a little bit of a pizzazz is going to help people want to click onto your profile, um, view a little bit more, anything that's going to pique their interest. 
And then here I have an example. So the founder of Poppy, um, which if you're not familiar is a beverage company. Um, the founder of Poppy here is a really great example to look at. Poppy recently had a Super Bowl commercial last month um, that was a hit. So she actually has included in her uh, headline that she's a creative disruptor. And I'd say it adds a little bit of her personality, helps her stand out a bit. As you'll see, um, it's not just her job title listed. It's multiple little like keywords words, little um, things that she she feels she's does very well in creative disruptor. Um, she is a board member, a public speaker, TikTok and social strategist. So very important when thinking of a headline. And then we have focusing on this summary aspect. So we went on to the headline. Now we're moving on to the personal summary um, of your profile now. So it is important to keep, I'd say, these three things in mind when writing your personal summary. So you're going to want to focus on hooking the reader early on, which I'd say in, in my shoes are very similar to digital advertising in the sense of it's important to catch the reader's attention or the user's attention very early on to get them to want to want to read more similar to those headlines that we were just talking about the last slide. Um, and who knows, it might even lead them to view your profile a little bit further, um, connect with you or recommend you for a job down the line. At the end of the day with LinkedIn, the opportunities are absolutely endless. Tip number two, um, talk through your journey. So you'll want to not only highlight your career journey um, and where you've been, but also the goals you have and what you would like to do in the future, I would say is very important. And then lastly, try adding in some keywords throughout your summary to help make it easier um, for you to be found by recruiters or, for example, future connections for when they're looking for somebody exactly like you. Um, they're very easy to find you. And then as an example here, um, a great example is our marketing manager, Emily, here at Digital Resource. So in her um, summary, she's sure to include her passions, what her current role is, and what are some of her interests um, to start some of those conversations moving forward. How to highlight your experience. So moving on to another section here. So rather than just including the positions that, you'd, that you've held, I'd say be sure to list out your achievements, projects you might have spearheaded or challenges maybe, for example, you've overcame. Um, extra points for, I would say, including any data that you might have to back up these statements that you're including. And if you can, I would say try and use some punchy verbs to help you stand out. So for example, instead of lead, use spearheaded, or instead of changed, use revamped. Um, my last example, instead of you um, saying you increased sales or you you were increasing sales, you skyrocketed them. So making sure that we're throwing in little punchy verbs here and there, um, again, more so to help you stand out a bit. And then lastly, include some visuals to help you grab people's attention. Um, so you can add links to you can add links, um, your portfolio. If there are any projects that um, you want to share that you've worked on, definitely feel free to include it in your LinkedIn profile. Um, anything, again, that's going to be helping you stand out in the crowd, that is the main goal when it comes to setting up your LinkedIn profile or setting it up for success, I should say. And then a great example of this is going to be Digital Resources Director of Client Operations, Nate. Um, he included a bunch of videos. So for example, towards the bottom, he included a bunch of videos that he's been involved with to showcase kind of his expertise. If anyone who is browsing his profile um, wants to click around and learn a little bit more, they can definitely go ahead and do so off of his profile. Now let's talk through the art of networking online and some tips and tricks to help you guys. So when it comes to LinkedIn, I would say, um, don't be afraid to put yourself out there. <laughs> I promise it's not as scary as it seems. It's more so, uh, it's more of a community than just a job or just the job platform that it's known as. So you never know where connections or posts could lead you. 
So uh, tip number one, or here we're going to go through a couple of tips. Uh, tip number one is going to be be approachable. Um, so for example, Max Spainer, who is the owner of Sloan Staffing, he actually uses LinkedIn to set up his meetings sometimes on the fly whenever he has an opening. So this is, again, very casual, very approachable. Again, even though LinkedIn can be used for, for the job hunt, you still want to make sure that you're feeling super, or that you are presenting yourself to be super approachable for people to connect with you or to engage in conversations or set up meetings, for example. The next one is going to be send messages. So no one wants an inbox full of automated messages. The messages should be used as a place to make new connections. So if there is someone that, for example, inspires you, definitely feel free to take the leap and reach out. So in this example, um, Caroline here is a recent graduate wanting to dive into the advertising industry um, and wants to learn a little bit more about the day in the life. So definitely feel free to send that message. Now let's talk through steps to finding and connecting with the right professionals. So step one is going to be before you move forward with connecting, be sure to keep in mind why exactly you're on LinkedIn. So are you looking for job opportunities or are you seeking advice from someone in the industry that you want to get into? It's going to be understanding your goal is going to help you know who you should be connecting with. Step two, um, advanced search is your friend. So using LinkedIn's advanced search is going to help you tremendously. It's going to help you find people in your industry, uh, alumni from your school, or even professionals working at the companies that you love. And with advanced search, you are able to filter by location, industry, and past companies to kind of help you narrow down your search a little bit more. Um, because remember, LinkedIn um, had 985 million members in 2023. So like I said, advanced search will definitely be your friend. And then step three, we have, um, while you can send a request to anyone you want on LinkedIn, that route might not help you achieve your goal. So before you send uh, a connection request to anyone or someone, on their radar first by engaging with their content, commenting, liking, sharing their post. And then once you've kind of done that, um, feel free to connect. And then after that, even definitely feel free to keep those conversations going because you connected with that person for a reason. Um, so don't just, uh, again, connect and then disengage, making sure that you're constantly engaging with those people who you did connect with. And I feel like I'm, I've been breezing through this. I apologize. Um, but the last topic that we are going to be talking about today um, is going to be building up your personal brand. So keep in mind while you are, or some things to keep in mind kind of while you're uh, building up your personal brand is all the features and tools that LinkedIn already provides. So a couple of popular ones here, you know, we have posts, blogs, newsletters, um, LinkedIn Live, featured posts, videos, co-created content. Um, but essentially the last thing that I wanted to leave you guys with today um, are essentially the three things that you can do to start building up your personal brand on LinkedIn. Um, so what you can do is you can leverage ChatGPT to help you create a content strategy, create posts, even blogs. Um, you can film a quick 30 second cover story video and save it as a featured post at the top of your profile for people to easily see. Um, and then also one thing um, that I highly recommend that quite a few of us use here um, over at Digital Resource is signing up for Feedly, um, which if you're not familiar with Feedly, um, it's essentially an AI news aggregator, and it will essentially just help you find relevant topics and trends that matter to you most um, that you can also go ahead and kind of share an article that you found via Feedly um, or help you participate in conversations that maybe you weren't so educated about prior or you didn't feel comfortable engaging in um, until you kind of had that knowledge or did a little bit of research. So those are going to be those three things um, that you can definitely go ahead and do today to start help build your personal brand. And then I just wanted to obviously take the time to thank you all for joining me today. Um, 
obviously I'm going to wish you guys all the best of luck with your LinkedIn journey. And I would definitely say, don't be a stranger. Feel free to connect with me on LinkedIn. We have um, a little QR code that if you scan it, it will take you to my LinkedIn profile. But with that, um, I guess we can open up the floor in case there were any questions that you guys wanted me to talk through. So we do have Nicole, uh, I guess to start with wonderful job, by the way, uh, it was actually much better than I was even thinking that you were going to do. So this is great. <laughs> so um, we do have one question in the chat. Um, let me see, where was it? Uh, I'm going to see who asked it here. Say so whoever asked it, feel free to take yourself off mute and ask to, oh, Noelle. Noelle asked, um, how do you make different positions appear uh, when they're concurrent or within the same role and or and or at different companies? So there should be an option, sorry, when it comes to like the how to's of things, I don't know if I'll be able to answer specifically only because I'd have to kind of do the walkthrough, but maybe what I can do afterwards is find some sort of an articles or resources uh, moving forward, which maybe we should have done prior. Um, but you should be able to totally do that, no problem. I'm sure you're not the only one who has experienced this. Um, all you should have to do is just go to the back end of LinkedIn, um, and then it should make it pretty straightforward. Also, I know probably if you're having some difficulties there, um, LinkedIn's pretty great at offering support. So if there is anything that you are encountering that isn't quite as it seems or isn't as easy as it should be, um, definitely I would say feel free to re reach out to LinkedIn because you should be able to set it up, no problem. Sorry. Yeah, if I didn't I'm, I'm happy to help too if, if I understand the question, Nicole. Because um, I, I think if I understand what you're asking, Noelle, is... Um, like if you already have a current position there and you just want to add like a promotion, is that correct? Hi everybody. Uh, uh, hi. So not 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 quite. For example, uh, uh, in the same company at the same time, I'm playing different role. Okay. Mm -hmm. like so I'm. Uh, let's say that I'm. This is my permanent position, but I'm in a special project team where I'm doing that. Where I have a different title. In this, uh, that's one. That, that's one. And second, let's say that I, I'm sure it's the, the case for most of us. We are with one company, but we may have our side gig where we are doing things, and then it's uh, something that gives you, you know, a lot of credentials that you want to, you know. That's that's what it is. Yeah. Thank you. And no, thank you for your question. And to clarify a little bit further, again, you definitely should be able to, because again, I'm sure you're not the only one who who has worked in one thing, but also done a little bit of something on the side. The only thing that I can think of is that it's definitely not going to be like a side-by-side -side comparison. If I can go back a little bit, like for example, on um, my profile, um, it's always, it's not going to be like a side by side. It's going to unfortunately show like one at the top, but I think it should still allow you the option moving forward to include two positions that you are working on at the same time. Again, whether they're in this, when they're at different companies, it's just one might be at the top and one might be towards the bottom. But again, you shouldn't have an issue doing that at all. Okay. Yeah, like I, that's how I have mine as well. My profile, because if you go there, you'll see South Florida Tech Hub, the association. It's up, it's up top because it's my yeah. main role. And then underneath, we have uh, also shows executive director of our foundation. So it does allow you to do two at the same time. You just have to make sure the dates are correct. Yeah. And then if it's something which I thought was your initial question, which I'm sure somebody has on here because it took me a minute to figure out was... <laughs> The, if you're it's if you're within the same company and you're just looking to add a promotion because I see sometimes people will add it as like a new role different, but you yeah. can actually just go to the plus button and do the same company and just do different dates and so it'll actually add it to the current job um, so you don't have to show it as, as if you left and then came back in a new role <laughs> thank you for that that was a good question though yeah thank you Rona. of course does anybody else have any other questions? Feel free if uh, if you're shy to drop them in chat or if you want to take yourself off mute, um, I'm happy to have you guys just yell them out here. I have a question. This is Jeffrey. Go for it. Uh, great job, Nicole. You mentioned Feedly. Yeah. Um, I guess multi-part question. Do you happen to know ballpark how much that costs? Uh, and they probably have a free version. Which version do you use? It should be and free. Sorry, what? I thought that was the end of your question. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. I was going to say it should be free. 
Um, you okay. should be able to access it free. And sorry, what was the other part of your question? What do you, I'm not quite sure of the functionality of it. And what, what do you think of that? What, sure. Whatever the functionality is, if you could go sure. back through that. Here, I was going to say, maybe I can just go ahead and um, okay. share my, or pull it up on my end to just kind of walk you guys through it. Um, but essentially all you have to do with Feedly is you are going to kind of choose some of the topics um, that you are super interested in. So again, just in my role, super passionate about learning more about Facebook ads, learning more about Google ads, anything advertising. So what you're going to do is just kind of set certain topics that you're interested in about, and it's going to aggregate all this data. Again, it's an AI like news right. aggregator um, for you to go through and kind of pick and choose, kind of give you a very quick summary um, for you to be able to navigate. And again, more so just for you to be able to have those conversations moving forward and making sure that you're staying up to date on trends. Um, I would say also, uh, what helps me stay up to date on trends is going to be just looking through my Facebook newsfeed more, or sorry, not Facebook, my LinkedIn newsfeed, um, more so just because my intention with LinkedIn, again, we were talking about what's your goal. My goal is just to stay up to date with trends, mm -hmm. connect with people a little bit further in the industry. So that's kind of how I stay up to date with trends. But outside of right. that, um, making sure that I have a Feedly set up to kind of pull all these articles for me yeah. to read up on. Is it just trying to aggregate what's already in your feed based on your criteria, or is it going out looking for, for additional information that's not already in your feed? You so know. this is going to be separate from LinkedIn. So what's already in my okay. feed is going to be, sorry for the confusion, it's going okay. to be LinkedIn specifically, and then Feedly is going to pull from the whole entire internet, but just more so narrowing it down for you a little bit more so you don't have to like actively stumble okay. upon it actively search for it um it's kind of going to narrow it down a bit for you there but does it show up in your feed in your linkedin it's, feed it's not going to show up in the linkedin oh, okay feed. No, it's going to be a separate website okay. that you be going through yep. okay sorry i was a little confused That's okay. okay no worries thank you worries at all of course Hi, Nicole. Uh, this is uh, Megan. Uh, thank you very, very much for the very informative uh, session. I really appreciate it. Um, I have a question for you. You made um, uh, you, you made a mention about uh, using advanced search. Now, I'm using regular LinkedIn, and I don't see an advanced search. All I see is a regular search. So, Am I missing something, or is so, that is that related to paid version of uh, LinkedIn? Thank good you. Good question. Um, thank you, Megan, for your question. It shouldn't be anything different. You're still going to be able to have that feature moving forward, just as the regular LinkedIn version. When I more so mean advanced search, I just mean customizing based on certain, like again, similar to what I was talking about with Jeffrey, um, certain like qualifiers in order to narrow it down a little bit more rather than just searching super broad. Again, you're kind of going to be able to, when you're searching, narrowing it down by specific job titles, by companies by location, um, that type of a thing. So it's it's still gonna be the same search, but more so, and sorry, that's my confusion for kind of my, my name for it. Um, it's just taking it up another notch and customizing it a little bit more to help you narrow it down. Thank you for that. Of course, thank you for your question. Any other questions? I had a question for you, Nicole. Um, I, I wanted to know if you had any advice for creating a profile for people that are the job seekers, because I know we often get this question at different events. They're like, look, I don't have a lot of stuff to build a profile with. I don't have a ton of experience. I don't know what to put there for, you know, because a lot of times in the header, you have like your titles and job experience. So you had um, in one of your slides, which I thought was cool because I wrote it down here was you had mentioned um, uh, the things to put on your profile. And one of the things you listed there was what drives you. Can you yeah. talk a little bit more about that? Because I'm, I'm just thinking for the job seekers, that might be helpful. Sure, sure. Yeah, here. Sorry, maybe I can go ahead and um, share my screen if that's super helpful. And I know I did it um, when I was speaking on it. I was bringing the example up um, about Emily, our marketing manager. Um, but so essentially, here's going to be my profile. And I know I shared it earlier, but it didn't have like 
the all the contents of it. Um, so down a little bit more is going to be in my about section. And to answer your question, Nikki, even though they don't have all the experience, as we talked about today, there are a ton of other aspects that they can add to um, to their profile, essentially. So you're able to still on your profile, it's going to appear your activity. So what you're recently engaging with, what you're recently commenting on. So that's a, another way to kind of showcase kind of your your interests there. Um, outside of, and I'm going to address the about question or the summary question for sure. Um, but outside of the experience, also below your education, you can list um, even the high school that you went to, you're able to um, add there any licenses and certifications. So even though they might ha not have experience in the job industry specifically, you can still go out and get certifications and make sure that they're all listed there. This is just highlighting a couple, maybe these ones are pinned, but as you'll see, if I were to click in a little bit more, um, it would kind of give give out an extensive list of all the certifications I've completed. That would be one thing that I would really recommend as well. Um, and then same thing with skills. Um, you can totally add as many skills as you want when it comes to your LinkedIn profile. And same thing with recommendations. So you can give recommendations, receive recommendations. Again, this is really going to be just helping you boost your credibility um, out there, whether it's somebody, again, if they didn't have prior uh, work experience in this industry, you can still have somebody uh, fill out a recommendation for you for sure. Um, but going on to that summary portion that you were talking about, again, what, what I was mentioning is in the first one or in the first part, you're going to want to make sure to um, have a hook, what drives you. One thing that I would also really help or really advise um, for working on the about section that I find to be super helpful and across the board when it comes to um, just anything content creation um, is utilizing chat GPT. That's going to be super helpful in order to kind of craft a narrative together. Um, so you can easily give it uh, or chat GPT or any kind of AI um, indicators of, hey, here is where I'm currently at right now. Here are some of my passions. Here's what I'm interested in. Um, here's what I want to do moving forward, I would also recommend getting like super specific of what um, what the goal is. So when, for example, if I were to be writing this with ChatGPT saying, hey, uh, hey, ChatGPT, I want to be writing a LinkedIn summary section. So I want it to include a eye-catching headline. I want it to include my history um, and then some follow-ups. And you can definitely, again, with any kind of AI, you can go back and forth. If it's not quite what you're looking for, um, feel free to customize it any further. But um, I would say definitely utilizing chat GPT, but just going back to, it's more so like internal questions you'll have to ask yourself is, okay, well, what what's my passion? What's driving me to move forward? Um, but more so chat GPT is going to kind of help you compile it all into something that that's super straightforward, if that makes sense. Does that kind of answer your question? Yep. Yep. Thank you. Rant, I'm sorry. No, that was great. Cool. Hi, this is Anita. I have a question. Just go for it. Hi, thanks, Nicole. Um, I've got a couple of questions, I think. I'm trying to articulate myself. Um, so the first one is I have um, obviously my LinkedIn profile, which is under my name. Um, so personal um, with all of my sort of experience and everything. Mm -hmm. And then I have my company LinkedIn page, which I have, which I created, but I haven't started anything yet on it. So I've, I'm just starting up my company right now. Okay. So how do you navigate that to link them together? Or is it better just to use your personal to promote your brand? Um, well, what would your advice be on that? So in, in terms of, yeah. Yeah, great question. Um, I would, my advice to be honest with that would be try and cross promote if possible. So like I know, for example, if I am ever posting, obviously, I mean, to what you were saying, there's two entities. So there's your personal yeah. um, and there's also your brand. But if there's, if they're kind of like symbiotic or you want a good relationship between the two or you have a certain amount of connections on your personal and you want them to kind of naturally transfer over to um, to your business, I would say definitely feel free to, I guess I would say cross promote. So when you're doing your post, tagging mm -hmm. the, the business page specifically, and then that way, whenever users are engaging with your post, then they can easily click over to it and um, connect with it, look through your posts, look through videos, that type of a thing. I would definitely recommend some sort of a cross promotion there for sure. It's 
is just including it when yeah. you're doing your day-to-day -day personal again because it seems like you've built it up to a certain extent um but I would de definitely say still with that making sure that you're posting that content on mm -hmm. your business page as well so and it's okay to post the same type of content I guess like in terms I of would... campaigns or to educational be honest, type things would be better on the company one or like, yeah, I would I'm just yeah sorry um I would say customize it a little bit differently um but, only because your audience is going to be a little bit different so your audience mm -hmm. on your personal one um is going to be different or it's going to differ from your company one so making sure your company one's a little bit more um, in line with whatever your business is and making sure that you're educating those um, who are following your page. And then when right. with your brand one, again, more so just with the cross promotion, I think it's okay. Or whenever you're tagging the business one, it's okay to kind of overlap a little. Um, but I would say try and keep them separate if possible, again, just because your audience is going to be different. Okay. Um, my other question would be, are... Uh, do you, I don't know if this is, well, I'm just going to say it. Do you do like one-to-one -one sessions to help like actually sit down with prof like LinkedIn pages and all of that sort of stuff? I do not, but I okay. can really consider it. <laughs> Thank you for I, that I, I mean, I've been using LinkedIn for years, but sure. I don't feel like I'm not a pro. And I think I've just used it to a very basic standard. Yeah. And I really would like to get to that level where I'm, you know, at the stage where my profile page is set up properly with help with help with somebody. Yeah. And then my company page is set up and then I just kind of know and can quickly do stuff. Like I want to get to that stage, whereas right now I feel like my page and everything is a little bit messy and, and I'm just not comfortable doing it on my own. I don't think. Sure. And I'd say is that something we could discuss. That's definitely something that we can discuss if you if you'd like. Um, again, not anything that I that I offer at this current moment in time. Right. But okay. Something we can have a conversation about for, for sure. Um, but that's one thing that just reminded me um, to bring up for discussion is I would mm -hmm. also say um, you can definitely uh, use LinkedIn to join different groups. I know that that's also outside of like Feedly um, and just your basic LinkedIn newsfeed is joining groups within LinkedIn is going to be super helpful. So again. And just in my role specifically as a paid media manager, um, I join groups for certain kind of information and I can post questions, I can reply and answer somebody else's question. So they're very well um, might be a group for that specifically, where maybe you can connect yeah. with somebody who maybe already offers it. Um, just a suggestion, but again, we can definitely um, connect and, and move forward. For yeah, sure. sorry, off topic a little bit, I guess, but That's thank you okay. very much. I appreciate that. That's okay, no worries at all. Nicole, you have a couple more uh, questions in chat. Um, Corey asks, have you found any social media apps that you can auto schedule to post on LinkedIn for a business post? And are you aware of any free social media schedulers? Good question. Um, I would say, unfortunately, I might, might not be the best person to answer this only because my experience is more so in the paid advertising side than the organic. Um, but I know that there are a ton of schedulers out there. I wouldn't say off the top of my head that I can think of that are free, unfortunately. Um, the free, I think, may more so just default to you, unfortunately, have to do it yourself. <clears throat> Um, but I know Hootsuite's out there. Um, that is a good platform that you can schedule through. Um, but I apologize that I might not be able to answer that question completely. Also, I might be wrong. I don't want to misspeak. But I think in LinkedIn, you might be able to schedule directly through the platform. Um, and uh, Genesis, who is on this Zoom as well, she said um, that Notion might be a good free option. So thank you, Genesis, for jumping in there. Yeah, so, so there are a few options where you can, but if you're just looking to post on LinkedIn, if it's a business page, you can, because I know I, I do that for all of ours. Um, you can schedule them out. I do them like for the whole week at a time. Um, but platforms like Hootsuite will allow you to do them to multiple mm -hmm. platforms at one time, but you can schedule them on LinkedIn. So Nikki, let me jump in here. We've got a new Tech Hub member that has a product that does that. It's called click click2.ai. Whoever asked that question, if you'll reach out to me and maybe in the recap, Nikki, since they're a member, we'll include their link. 
Yeah, well, I was saying, I'm, I'm pretty sure Digital Resource does that too, because <laughs> we've used uh, you guys in the past for that as well. No, I'm talking about not, not as a service, an actual product. I think the question was a yeah. product. Yeah, yeah. Um, there is another question here, and we have probably, I mean, because we're going to be at time now, so I guess this will be our last question for now, but um, Jan asks, for the video, would it be a 30 second introduction or what kind of content should I, should I promote myself? Good question. Um, I would say it should more so be a, a sort of introduction similar to maybe just like a synopsis of your whole entire profile. I mean, granted, users can go through the profile and look for themselves. But if what we were talking about in the presentation, if you're going to be pinning it to the top of your page, um, I would say more so do an introduction or do a full recap of like, hey, my name's Nicole. I'm a paid media manager over at Digital Resource. Um, if you're looking for paid media content or advertising tips and tricks, like definitely feel free to connect with me. Um, and I'm looking I'm looking forward to talking with you further, like that type of a thing. That would be my recommendation. Again, super quick. Um, that's why I recommend 30 seconds only because the user's um, attention span isn't very long. Um, so we'll want to make sure to make it quick and quick and sweet there. Um, so I would just say just a little intro there. Awesome. And we are right at time. So if anybody has um, any other questions, please feel free to reach out to us, reach out to Nicole, um, any of the digital resource people that are on here today. Um, but we will connect with you, Nicole, afterwards if there's anything that you would like to share, any contact information, links to anything. And we'll make sure to send up a follow-up email to uh, anybody that's registered for this today. Um, but I just wanted to say thank you to all of you for coming, attending, taking part in this. Um, it was actually really, really good, Nicole. So thank you so much for your time. Yeah, of course. Thanks for having me. Appreciate uh, everyone joining in your questions. So thanks so much. I hope you guys have a great weekend. Thank you. Thanks, everybody. Bye.